Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. Life, everyone. My name's Jen, and I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, is Hannah and Brian. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I missed last week, but it just yeah, going on vacation and stuff. Got, well, I got out of hand. Okay. Well, it was funny because I'm sure you didn't listen to the episode, Jen, because you never do. But um. <laughs> <laughs> No, Heno Heno reached out literally two minutes after you signed off. (laughs) (laughs) So does that surprise me? I kind of figured something like that was going to happen, right? So that's why him and I were just like, you know, well, we're here. (laughs) Yeah, let's do it. (laughs) Let's do it. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. So we still recorded on Wednesday last week, but it was or no, not Wednesday, whatever day it was supposed to be. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Oh, is it? Okay, I couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's fine. We went on and had a good show without you, so. Yeah, as always, I know you guys do an amazing job, but I'm not able to join. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, so, how has your week been? How was your holiday? Nope, nope, mm-mm. You know the rule. <laughs> Yeah, I believe we have a standing rule. Yep. When you skip a week, you <laughs> go first. Did you ever get created? I don't remember this. <laughs> the, it was two-thirds majority. You probably weren't there for the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, like... <laughs> uh, my, my week has been um, pretty uneventful. I mean, pretty fun. I ended up going out of town for the 4th of July holiday. Um, We left on a Friday and came back on uh, the 4th, which was a Tuesday, in the afternoon. And uh, we took our dog with us. So we went up to uh, Lake Huron, a.k.a. up north. (laughs) So we went up north, for us anyways. And, uh, yeah, had a bunch of family Family fun time, uh, played a few drinking games, um, yeah, partied a little bit, shopped a little bit, and then we tubed down the Asabo River. River, I can't say Asabo and River together, it seems. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You're 0, 0 for 2 so far. <laughs> 0 for 2. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, basically, we were in a tube, and... <laughs> All hooked together. There's seven of us. 
Uh, we were everybody was in their own tube. All the tubes were hooked together with uh, drinks and snacks and stuff. Were in tubes in the middle of all of us, mm-hmm. and we literally just floated down the river. And every so often, we would have to do a you know, position adjustment by kicking our legs or you know mm-hmm. using our hands to kind of move us away from debris mm-hmm. or whatever. Nice. But yeah, so for the most part, we just kind of just chilled and just yeah it took us. In the end, we stopped at a beach area for about an hour, hour and a half. But in total, the whole trip took us about six hours. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That is a considerable trip. Yeah. Moving very fast. (laughs) Yeah. How did you get back? Well, they they put you in. um, You park. Then they take you in a bus up the river. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. And then they put you in the river upstream. Okay. And then you just float down to where your car is at. Makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it worked out well. And then uh, we had a friend of the family who was in a kayak. And when we really got stalled, um, he would come out and he would grab a hold and we'd grab a hold of him. And he'd kayak us out of any sort of trouble or got us in the mainstream so that we would go down the go down the river a little faster. So oh, nice. Yes. Larry was a hero amongst the entire river because <laughs> everyone would see him dragging us along all seven tubes behind him in his little kayak and everyone was making comments so we announced he was Larry. So as he's going down the river everyone's chanting Larry Larry <laughs> 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 So it nice. was a good time. Nice. But it was fun. And actually, um, the weekend really kind of made me think about um, different different ways of approaching things. And something I had read a while ago about life lessons you can learn from your dog. So when we're ready, we I have a few of those that I wanted to share with the group. So I'll let you guys kind of talk about your week, and then we can go on to the topic of the day. All right. All right. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, I mentioned this on Salty Language, but uh, the people in this area shot fireworks off from Thursday all the way until last night. And it wouldn't shock oh, me if there's more tonight. But I was like, okay, enough. I get it. Murica and all that. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at some point, it's like, come on, you know. Um, they must have bought a bunch. <laughs> um, Those were yeah, cheap this year. Yeah, you know, it's, but, it, you know, as we've mentioned before on here, it's like, it, it kind of sucks because luckily our dog and cat are pretty good about the fireworks. You know, they yeah. don't really get spooked by them too much. Unless they're loud. There was one that went off that sounded like uh, it was boom kind of a thing. And that one scared them both. You know, the cat went and hid under a chair for a while and the dog was sleeping and she sat up and her ears were, you know, just like, oh, you know, like very, (laughs) you know, I mean, just like anybody would be. Uh, But, you know, it's, um, yeah, whatever. You know, you got to celebrate, I guess. So I didn't, I didn't do anything this year. Um. I yeah, which is fine. I'm not big on fireworks, and you know, so it was like meh. But uh, yeah, we didn't do a whole lot. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I've been you know trying to eat better and everything, and I've lost a few pounds doing that. And just if nothing else, I've been getting way more vegetables and fruit. You know, which is mm-hmm. you know a good thing, and focusing on eating more protein than I was before. <clears throat> And my sister and her husband came over last night, and it is just crazy how much weight they've lost. Uh, they've been on a program for a while, and uh, I don't know how much my sister's lost, but I haven't seen her this thin in years. Wow, wonderful. And, yeah, and my brother-in-law has lost over 70 pounds, and it's just, wow. they both are looking great. They actually, just this past weekend, um, they, uh, not this week, I'm sorry, uh, it was like... No, it was like middle of the week or something. They uh, rode like 20 miles on their bikes. I mean, this wow. is, yeah, they're going out bike riding That's all the time. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm I, I'm so happy. For, it was funny, though. My sister makes cakes for people, 
and she brought over a cake <laughs> and I'm like, Oh man. She's like, what? I was like, I'm trying so hard not to eat stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but you know, of course I had a piece of cake and, uh, <laughs> um, but she, uh, she's like, yeah, they didn't have any of it. You know, she's making cakes for other people. She's not even like dipping her finger in the frosting or whatever. She's really trying to stick to what she's doing. And I, I, I'm so proud of her because she's, she's putting in a lot of work, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that she's doing it because, you know, it's one of those things that you see people and you know, they, they need to make some changes in their life. And it isn't about the weight again, as we've talked before on here, you talked about Heno on, uh, um, Angel. Angel's awesome. Jeez, <laughs> I blanked for that. But you know, it isn't necessarily all about the weight loss, but it's about you On know health, health yeah. overall. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad to see him doing that. Well, they're they're following the first rule. Don't get high on your own supply. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Because she brought it over to us to dump it on us. <laughs> um, but you know, it it was. It was cool, you know, to, to see her and stuff and, you know, that she's doing that. I, and it, and it's an, you know, kind of an inspiration for me too, because it's, you know, something I've needed to do. And, you know, it's like, it makes me happy that we're kind of all, you know, a lot of us are, are kind of starting to do this here and, you know, whatever. I just yeah, need to get, get moving. That mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. And that's a, I, I, for some reason I find that even more uh, inspirational when someone is still able to you know, bake or do whatever it is like that, but still maintain their, right. their what they're working on. Yeah. That Cause, is so impressive. Because I would not be able to do that. If I made that second second cake that she made, because, you know, sometimes when you buy, when you're doing cakes, you'll have extra, you know? So you'll bake up, yeah. like, mm-hmm. cupcakes or an extra small cake or something. My mom made cakes for years, and there was, you know, whenever she did, there was almost always, like, a small, you know, like a, a six-by-six cake or something like that left. And, um... Uh, you know, so, uh, and I, there's no way I'd bake that and give it away. I'd end up eating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I might share it with people, you know, if someone came over, I'd be like, Hey, here, some cake. But, uh, mm-hmm. otherwise, no, I'd probably end up just eating it. So, you know, <laughs> you're right. I, I am, you know, uh, extra proud of her for, for doing that. Cause she's really is putting in the work and I made sure I told her. You know, mm, like yeah. uh, that I was proud of her and that, you know, that kind of thing because, and I even told her cause she said something about the weight and I was like, I, I'm not even proud of you. I'm like, the weight's great. And I was like, I'm just proud of you that you're, you know, she, she had to have a bone spur removed that was grinding on her Achilles and, you know, she had to completely stay off her foot for six weeks. And then after that it was limited and all this. And she's after that, not just gotten used to that sedentary lifestyle she was like, I'm going to get on a bike and start riding it, you know, for, for whatever. And the doctor, you know, told her that's great because it'll help stretch that ligament back out from, you know, the atrophy of it, of just sitting around for all that time. And I just, like I said, that's what I'm proud of her for is that she didn't just go, she had started changing her, her lifestyle before the surgery. And then that surgery didn't derail her. As soon as she could get back to what she was doing, she was back to what she was doing. And it's like, that's how you know it's a lifestyle change. That it's yeah. not a yeah. diet or whatever. That that is what who you want to be now, you know. And I told her, I said, that's why I'm proud of you. You know. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. So that's been about it. Other than that, nothing's really going on other than I'm playing too much Diablo on my PlayStation 4. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, how, how about you? How are things? Uh, pretty good. I had a really uh, very my uh, facilities manager's out of town, so uh, I'm. You know, we're kind of short staffed right now, and which actually is that big of a deal. But I, I came in just because it's the beginning of our busy se- season, and I, I did. Uh, two uh late night working sessions last week and and the the second one i was at i didn't get there till eight thirty at night and i think i left at like 11 you know and and i got home at like 
you know, I was, I was like, I was in bed just a little after midnight and Sharon worked late. And so she comes in a little after midnight. And so now it's like, I was just about to fall asleep. That's what it was. I was like almost uh-huh. asleep. And she walked in and it's like, okay, I'm up to one now. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I knew I was going to go leave work early the next day, but it was still, I was just, I mean, you know, I got up at the usual time, 6.30 or 7. I got five hours of sleep. It's like everyone can see it on my face the next day. You know, they're like, sure. wow, you look really tired. But it felt really good. You know, I like I like when I'm in a place where even when I'm tired, I can feel positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a big victory. That's it, And it's more than just uh, mental health. It's also being, you know, physically in a good place. Yeah. You know, where I'm not feeling fatigued or run down. And I, and I have been, I've been, you know, I've, I'd like to be picking up more days at the gym, but I'm still going. And that's been like, it was this last Friday where because of the back issues I've had, I've been really reluctant to do a lot of heavy weights. Mm -hmm. I mainly just avoid them because yeah, it's not necessary. You know, I don't, it doesn't really, but I still am kind of bummed. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to, you know, yeah. Because there's still it's, a lot of core the, stuff you can do that will affect that area that, you know, for strength and all that without yeah. getting too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, and, but it's still that, it's that boy, I'd really like to be able to, you know, be able to do those things again. And so lately I have been, and it's been really great, mm. you know, that, that I, I'm not sitting there in fear of like, what's this going to do to my back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And, and that's felt really good. So I've been on a pretty good up and it also hasn't, you know, hurt to have four day weeks. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. Come off this'll, of vacation. This'll and... be my... <laughs> yeah. I, I came, you know, I missed a Sunday on that. And then this last week, you know, Wednesday and uh, got off work, but I did a whole, I'm with you, Brian. I did a whole lot of nothing and played a lot of video games, <laughs> but I still, you know, got that's out and did the need. Yeah, and it was funny, I remember, uh, you know, I was talking about uh, last, I don't know if it, it would have been last week, no, it would have been two weeks ago, when because I, with the, when I came back that night, I was talking about how, like, I just have this urge to not do the things that I'm supposed to do, mm. you know, after vacation, Yeah, and, but I've been doing them anyway, and I recently just noticed that Sharon has been the complete opposite. And for the last two weeks, there's been a whole lot of nothing happening. <laughs> and I don't mind doing the rest of it, you yeah. know, because it's just been like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll do the dishes again. All right, I'll, you know, take care of the laundry, this or that. But I, I, I couldn't help but notice it. I was like, that's, I, I, and that's why I haven't said anything because it's like, I know what that feels like. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. that feeling. And that's, that's, I mean, she gets vacation depression sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. That's just the way it's, yeah. it's, you know, manifesting itself, but it is, it's kind of been, it's just been fun to, to be able to look at that kind of stuff and go, oh, eh, I get it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and there's something, it really feels good. So I, I went, I went out of town on a uh, Friday night when visited a friend and th- here's the other thing. It's been really hot here. Yeah. Mm. And. I mean, it's not like it's super hot, but it's still hot. Anything over 95, anything between 95 and 100 is like, okay, that's a bit much, you know. And I rode two hour, two and a half hours home on my bike on Saturday in the middle of the day. Oof. You know, and even though, you know, I'm doing 75 miles an hour, that's plenty of air going by. But mm. still, I'm in the sun for two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like, I didn't realize how, how like, it just takes you know i, I yeah. was dehydrated i was gonna say your me- your meat still gets dried out <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah uh, um yeah that was, but th- th- it's it's wild how that just it's so i haven't beat myself up at all which is another win for the week it's just like yeah no i'm gonna get on the couch and take a nap and drink a lot of fluids and you know because i had an opportunity to go to a show and everything like that and i, just, I was just, i was tired and, and i actually i fell asleep and sharon had come home from um, li- listening to a speaker, then she went out, and and I didn't even know she came home. I was just out, you know. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> well, exhausting, but, I'm sure. Yeah, and it, but it's it just comes back to all those great reminders: self care. You know, uh, pay attention to your body. You know, listen, listen to your body. Yeah. Uh, listen to where you are mentally and physically, mm-hmm. and and start the next day. Yeah, you know, and 
that's kind of how my week's been, and that feels pretty darn good. Yeah, that's awesome. I a couple that's awesome. a couple days ago, I I did that too. Like I I got up. We we had to go. I had to go get um like refill on my medicine, and <clears throat> did that and grab something to eat. And I came home and was you know just not really doing much of anything for a couple hours. And I'm like, man, I'm just sitting there, and I was like, I just feel exhausted. You know, and, Mm -hmm. and I was like, and I, you know, I was like, I'm going to go lay down for a little bit. Yeah, I didn't, I stayed in bed all night and woke up the next day around like two o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, wow, I was out, you know, like, I think I woke up a couple of times, you know, and grabbed a quick drink of water or whatever. And that was pretty much right back to sleep. And, uh, the worst part was it wasn't like, I didn't wake up like, ah, fresh as a daisy kind of a thing. I woke up and I was still kind of like man, I feel like I could keep laying here. And those are the, those days are tough. Cause I don't know if that's depression or if there's, mm. you know, y- you never know, like, am I starting to get sick? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. is there something just, is my body just really need, you know, that much, uh, sleep. And I was like, and I was like, I'm going to get up. And if my body still tells me that it needs sleep, then I'll go back to bed, you know? Cause it was one of those days where I was like, this, this feels like it could easily turn into being in bed three days in a row, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a thing. So I was like, I'm going to see, tr- see if I can figure out if this is depression or if this is something my body is telling me that it just needs. And, uh, and I think it was depression cause I got up and got moving a little bit and I still was like, I was still kind of tired. I still easily could have went and got back into bed, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, whatever, but I didn't, I just kind of you know again didn't do a whole lot but i just didn't let myself just lay there and or lie there and just not do anything so i think that was a huge win for me because a lot of days like that i would have just been like i'm just gonna stay here you know (laughs) that's a great thing so again even listening to my body i also was kind of like well i hear what it's saying but i need to figure out which (laughs) which message is the true one and which one is the distorted one you know yeah yeah so yeah that's awesome yeah because that's right because how often we've always uh, we've talked about quite a few times on here is how sometimes your your mind can play tricks on you Mm -hmm. and can fool you into believing one thing when it means another in the fact that you thought long enough and you thought enough of it to do the investigative work yeah. investigative work right now to figure it out makes a difference i was also able to there are some days where i'd feel that way and mm-hmm. like i said i i just couldn't you know like i just wouldn't be able to get out of bed but mm-hmm. i was you know that's why i said i was like i was kind of in between the two and i was like i'm gonna figure out which one this is because if this is depression i don't want to let it get any stronger of a, a hold mm-hmm. you know and if it is my body needing more then you know, it's kind of, then it's a little concerning because I, you know, like I, I don't feel sick, but if all of a sudden I'm really fatigued, it's like, why am I feeling fatigued? You know, I'm eating right. better stuff. I'm, you know, it's like, and it's like, is this something I should talk to my doctor? You know, like those kind of things. Mm-hmm. It's like that I have to stay on top of too. So. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Well, I kind of gave a little teaser at the beginning of the the show. Um, Something I wanted to talk about today um, was when I took Otis, Otis is our dog. He's a uh, eight month old um, pit bull. And we took him up to the lake with us. And there was lots of firsts for him and lots of new people, lots of new dogs to meet. And he did a really great job. But it got me thinking of um, some things that I've read a long time ago about life lessons I've learned from my dog. And some of these really I wanted to bring up today for us to talk about is the first one is don't be afraid to chase your tail. (laughs) There's a lot to be said for mindless entertainment. Some might say a dog chasing his tail is a sign of low intelligence. These are the same people who play Candy Crush and watch The Bachelor. Sometimes we just need a diversion. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, yep. it was, it's one of the very first things that we do as babies is we play with our toes. We, you know, investigate the world around us. And we, 
we find amusement and enjoyment in the simple things. Right. And, and also diversions are, you know, uh, that's how I deal with my anxiety and, and such mm-hmm. as well. You know, like if I'm getting racing thoughts or just a bunch of negative thoughts or whatever, it's, you know, turn on a TV show that you really like or listen to music or play a video game or whatever. You know, those things can be really important for that, too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> exactly. Um, the other one, next one is do wag your tail. <laughs> tail wagging is a dog's way of smiling. Although some would argue that dogs can actually smile with their mouths too. People who learn to smile proactively radiate goodwill and lighten their own load. You know, be happy in yourself. And I think that's kind of where they're going with that one yeah. is you try to enjoy the simple things, enjoy life for what it is. And smile. Yeah. Smiling's nice, people. Mm-hmm. It's and, just nice. And as much as I hate telling people to smile, you know, there is science behind it that even just forcing yourself to smile releases uh, stuff in your body that will improve your mood. So. It's just nice. Yeah. Just as long as you're not telling somebody for any uh, cosmetic reasons to smile. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> smile for the sake of smiling. Yeah. yeah. Really, don't let anyone else tell you to smile, including us. You know, smile when you feel like smiling or when you want to smile. But <laughs> or wag your tail if you have one. That's fine too. No, I don't want to alienate okay. anyone. Yeah. The next one is: Don't be afraid to ask for what you want. In this uh, in this article, the dog's name is Boise. So don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Boise has an annoying habit of whining for table scraps. I say it's annoying, but it also works. He would be silly to stop negotiating for his slices of pepperoni. My point, humans should not whine, but they also should not be afraid to ask for what they want. Oh, so I shouldn't go around a a pizza place and sit on the floor (laughs) and whimper until I get scraps? Probably not. I'm no longer liking this article. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I no, do, this does not work for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i do like what they're what they're saying here um because how often do we not we don't put it simply we don't ask for what we want mm-hmm. we just don't yeah you know we'll pussyfoot around it we'll dance around it we'll you know, assume somebody knows that what we want. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> we, yeah, just automatically assume someone's going to read your mind and know what you want them to say, what you want them to do, what you want. Yeah. Uh-uh. Don't work that way, yeah. folks. Sometimes you just got to step it up, suck it up, and say, you know, I want this last piece of pizza, and I'm going to eat the last piece <laughs> of pizza. Yeah. Well, You, you guys noticed how I, I picked up Bogart a few mm-hmm. minutes ago because he planted himself right between my feet. Well, that's because of the time. It was feeding time. <laughs> yep. And he made himself very much <laughs> yep. noticeable. He was very conspicuous. Yeah. Nice. My my cat last night was, I was in here working on a podcast, and my cat was outside the door, and wow, 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 wow. And, and normally, you know, I'd shoot her away a couple of times, and she just would not stop. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go check her food bowl. And sure enough, I went out there and it was bare. So she was mm-hmm. like, hey, I need food, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, and it's like as soon as I started pouring food in there, she's sticking her face in there. I'm like, oh, geez, now I feel bad because she must have been <laughs> really hungry. <laughs> but it's, it's same idea. Those la- both of those last two deal with being in the, being in the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like b- being, you know, when, when, when we walk in the door, our dogs – you know, and our cats, they mm-hmm. they come up, they do their job. Yeah, like this is this is the moment I'm supposed to be in. If they're not doing that, something's really wrong, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and and there's a consistency there, and I think that's something that that like I know at, at work. I mean, I'm a pretty much a glass half full kind of guy, and if suddenly my reaction is not that, people go, "Oh, is something wrong?" Mm-hmm. You know, and th- and there there's something I think there's something good about that 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 you know I I try to put to be a certain type of person so 
everyone knows the way, you know, how yeah. I am. And a lot of that has to do with being in that moment. It's like, okay, at this moment, regardless of what's going on in my life and what, and, or maybe what happened 10, 15 minutes ago in this moment right now, I can have a good attitude. I can, I can be positive. And, and I think the same thing goes with asking for what you want. That has to do with not being passive aggressive. Yeah. It's saying, Hey, this is, you know, this is where I'm at. You analyze, is this, you know, is this the right time to say something? You know, I go through the, go through the chat marks, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all well, the usual things, you know, is, is what I have to say necessary? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then, and then if it's something that, that, you know, I bring it up. Up rather than letting it sit for days and then coming out right. sideways and all that stuff. And both yeah. of those things are, I think, very much about being in the moment. Plus, it's good communication. It's just that good too. communication. If you tell somebody what you need or want from a scenario, they don't have to try to infer. They don't have to try to, like Jen said before, you know, they don't have to read your mind to come up with, well, what is it that they want? It's like if you just say, hey, this is what I need or what I want, they know. And you got you can just react. There's no no games being played. There's no like you said. There's no mm-hmm. passive aggressiveness, or it doesn't come out weird later, or, or become an argument later. You know, like it's yep. I've told you. Then it can you know it's like oh, okay. Well, you straight out told me. Now I can process and whatever. I mean, there could still be an argument, but you know what I mean. It's a, right. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's just good communication. It's just just tell people what you want and it doesn't have to be like henno said you know still you know consider the be kind and all this other stuff like don't don't just you know uh don't just be selfish with it you know it isn't it isn't necessarily about getting your way as much as it is you know just like you said living in the moment there's right now this is what i i want and need and whatever so just because you ask for something doesn't mean you're going to get it also true that's the you know and that's the other thing yeah. is to be accepting of that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Our you dog. must accept the fact that yes, you can ask for anything you want. It's true. Doesn't yeah. mean the person's going to respond the way you want them to respond or say yes and give you what you want. Mm-hmm. But it's still important that you've said and you've put it out there what you want. Yeah. My cat will go to the refrigerator and rub the refrigerator anytime I'm near it, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to feed her more canned food, you know, and yeah. that's the exact, right. that's the exact same thing, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's, you know, she's can't like, hurt her for trying. but yeah, exactly, but you can't blame her for trying, or like you said, the dog that begs, <laughs> you know, if the dog gets scraps, the dog's going to continue to beg because it's worked, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. right. and they want more, so, you know, you can't, um, but yeah, this this is also a good one for confidence. Um yes. to work on your own confidence because if you tell people what you want, uh it's also good for your mental health because if you tell people what you need, it it fits kind of in the same thing here in that again, they don't have to read your mind or whatever. It's like you know, you just know. And by telling people what you want, again, if you go into a job interview and you kind of really him and haw about like what money you need or whatever it is that you need to negotiate in that time it's it's a terrible bargaining te- technique you know because <laughs> you're going to mm-hmm. seem weak you know if you go in there and say yeah you know i i need at least x dollars or i can't do this then then you can work on it and so th- this one's a really important one for so many reasons absolutely the next one is live simply if you feel like you're becoming a slave to consumerism observe your dog once you have a bed food and water in a loving family everything else is icing beyond the basics you can get by with a couple of toys and occasional treat <laughs> this is where the hierarchy of needs comes into play i guess <laughs> <laughs> that's great mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. keep it simple yeah, yeah. well that's I that am... really is what the hierarchy of needs is if you look at it it's yeah. it's yeah. all very simple <laughs> stuff but it, they're yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've I've been finding myself really uh, confronting this on a daily basis because I actually now have some money in a bank account, which is wow, shocker, <laughs> you know, right? and and something, and I'm so used to being in a state of of lack mm-hmm. or you know need, needing things that when something pops up, I, I I'm sitting there going, okay, now am I am I just am I buying this because I really need it right now, or is this me you know want Right. Yeah. And I'm really looking at it because it's like, okay, I've got a goal. I'm 
I'm on the path. You know, I've been doing, I'm continuing my work on it mm-hmm. and having everything work the right way. But it's, it's interesting how it's changed when I now have the ability to, <laughs> you know, get what I want, basically. <laughs> And then to really sit there and go, okay, is this something that I need? And and it's always a reminder that I do need to include. It's it's you know having having the team or the you know the clan or your uh, you know whatever you want to call it to to bounce things off of yeah. is important. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's wild how it's like there. There's that. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to swing too far in the other direction. Yes. Right. You know, it's, it's, I, I really don't. I, 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 I want to be able to be happy with what I have for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there's definitely, uh, but I also don't want to deny myself something that would, that would, you know, bring me pleasure or make me, you know, feel good. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. makes total sense. Yeah. Cause it, you know, what's interesting is that since I haven't been working, I've had to, adjust because i very much before was the oh i have money i have to spend it <laughs> you know and yeah. uh, now mm-hmm. when i get money i'm more like I'm, i roll a little more into the eh, i really don't want to spend that right now and uh but it's, it's also uh very much looking at stuff that there's tons of stuff i want you know but when i have 20 bucks or something like that it's like well i could buy that but then i won't have this for if i need something or i won't you know and it mm-hmm. it really adjusted how i was just you know just it's like i said as soon as i got money it was gone i'd spend it you know yeah and now i'm not looking at things so much that way i'm you know going when i get money it's like okay is there anything i need to take care of you know mm-hmm. and then it's okay now yeah. Now this I can, you know, spend on whatever I want if I want to or something. So it's, it's been a, a, a strong adjustment for me, but it's one I needed though, because, you know, I, I was way too irresponsible for a long time. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it too, is I, I needed a shift mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and I, and as much as I tried to shift my thinking without having the, the, the difference you know, and the actual, you know, like difference in my situation, let's just say it, it really, it, I had to, I had, they kind of had to both work it. They yeah. had to come together at the same time. Mm-hmm. It seems like that's, it was, that was how it was almost kind of meant to happen. Yeah. It's like when I was finally able to shift my thinking a little bit, then it's almost like I manifested the opportunity to actually make the changes yeah. and now have them both kind of work together right? in a way that that's positive. Cause it's yeah. so much harder when you have to shift your thinking as a result of, uh, you know, when it's, when it's all cause and effect like me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot harder. Yep. It is because now what's happened is a lot of this time that I've been unemployed, there's been a whole lot of telling myself, no, you know, so now if at some point I do come into some money, I have to be really careful that there's not a rebound <laughs> to yeah. where I'm like, now I'm buying all the things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's, you know? that's where I'm at. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's been on the wish list. Yep. But, you know, let's, let's see, is it really a necessary list? Right. Or, or right. even it's a, do I have to buy all of it now? <laughs> like, that, well, you that's know. it. That's really it is like, yeah. because I can, oh, like I, like, all right, in two months, is it, you know, is that something worth consider? Yeah. In two months, it's worth still considering. There's yeah. no need, you know, it's a, it's a great point. And, and it just brings me back to that, the fact that in the morning when, when Jax comes and crawls up on me because he hears my alarm go off and he knows it's time for me to get up and I'm sitting there and petting him, I'm not thinking about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just like he isn't. Right. He's just thinking about, oh, you know, yeah. I get my dude's awake. Yeah. He's not sitting yeah. there going, you know, I could use a new chew toy. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, he, he's just nudging my hand going, don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's fun. awesome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, when in doubt, take a nap. A dog <laughs> consists of long naps interrupted by short, intense bursts of activity. <laughs> Any counselor will tell you that sufficient rest and regular exercise are crucial for maintaining good mental health in humans, too. 
Yeah. So yeah, stay after my puppy, take a nap, then get up and run as fast as you can over. <laughs> Yes. So that's like that was my week was was when I, after I after I took my nap, I got up and I was like, okay, I got some things that, that need to be done around here before it gets too dark. And I went and took care of them. And then afterwards it's like, okay, I can hit the couch again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's funny how the uh you know, when I always go, oh, you know, my my dogs get, you know, I take them up to daycare one day a week and, you know, they're so tired afterwards and they must really do a whole lot or blah, blah, blah. And then I'll talk to Leanne and she'll be like, well, yeah, there's a little bit of playing going on. But for the most part, they all find their little corners and they lay there until some action comes along. <laughs> and, you know, and and then, you know, then everyone gets up and does their dog thing Um and then, so Sharon has been able, she's working near home, so she comes home all the time. And I'm like, so what do the dogs do when you come home? She's like, they're sleeping. They're always <laughs> sleeping. Right. The only reason that they're tired is because they have to stay awake at daycare all day. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that they're active. Yeah. They're just not sleeping all day. <laughs> nice. No, but it's true because nice. they're, they, they really are. They're like, they're like, I have a job to do. That's to please my human, mm-hmm. and and when when I don't have to be doing that, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my Z's in. Yeah, yep. yeah. I can see. Yeah, I'm good. And, and that's it's funny. It's like you know, my cat's the same way. Like she'll be in a dead sleep as soon as I get up. She's up. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the time she'll get up and kind of follow me around, and uh, you know, but after a little while, like she'll come out. I'll pet her for a while, or whatever, and then after that, then. It, and I'll be like, where did she go? And then you look, she's back in her bed sleeping. But then she'll get up um, later because it's time to herd us back to our bedrooms. You know, when it's around 9, 10 o'clock, because that's usually when, um, you know, my mom and her, her, her boyfriend go to bed. So around 10, 30, something like that. She mm-hmm. comes out about half an hour or so early because she usually will get treats. So she comes out for the treats and then she'll stay out there. And it's funny if they stay up until like midnight or whatever, you can look at her and she's, you know, fighting to keep her eyes awake and stuff. And it's like, you think she'd just go to sleep, but she won't. She's got to stay awake because she has to get us to our place before she can finally lay down and rest for the night, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Everyone's got to be in their spot. <laughs> yep. Well, and, and this comes back to what we always talk about with the idea of put your, get your, you know, Put yourself into the best possible place for you to be of service to others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, th- you know, that idea is like, you know, you, you, you there's a reason why you put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then on the people next to you. And I, I think it's a great lesson. It's what our dogs are doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're, 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 they're being ready to be there for us, you know, because they've got, a, they've got, it, how amazing to have that type of uh, focused mindset. Yeah. You know, Jax is never selfish. I'm always selfish. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. He's never selfish. He's always ready. Yeah. You know, he's, 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 and he's preparing himself and, and I could really learn a lot from that. It's like, you know, I need to have myself to be in the best way physically and mentally so that I could be useful, you know, to somebody else if they need it. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the next one's kind of a biggie. Don't take your family for granted. This is a biggie. There you go. Mm-hmm. If we are gone from our house for over an hour, Boise greets us, each of us, as a long-lost friend when we return. If mm-hmm. we all practice this kind of loyalty and affirmation, most family conflicts would melt away. And in this case, folks, family is the same as friends. It's Family is who we choose to surround ourselves with in a, in a loving manner. So... It's all, it's like that, it's having the, the, that old proverbial attitude of gratitude at all times. Yep. It's really what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. And just, you know, who doesn't love that feeling when you walk in a room and people are like, oh, hey, I missed you. How are you? Mm-hmm. You know, it, I, I can think of times though when that would drive me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It has to be appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> there are moments where it's like, mm, no, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Too much, too much, too much. Yep. But, you know, the same thing that we do with our dogs, you know, when they're jumping on us and stuff. It's like, too much, too much, too yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but are we ever, are we, we don't ever, like, 
hit them. We don't ever put them down. Exactly. We never do that. We still appreciate the fact that they're they're doing their job. Yeah. yeah. You know, thank you. You know, blah, blah, blah. You might just not be in the mood to, like, do the full, you know, yep. response. But you're never mean. And I think yep. that's the main thing. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and you show, you know... The, you know, if you're acting like your dog here, like you said, it's showing appreciation when someone comes home because, you know, it is nice to have, you know, that companionship and whatever. And that's the reason we're in relationships is we're, you know, we long for that companionship. So why not show, again, it's showing appreciation for, you know, for someone, as we talk about quite a bit on this show, you know, uh, let them know you appreciate them when they get home. Don't just, eh, well, you know. <laughs> dude, that's exactly, that's all. I was just thinking about like, hey, selfish guy here barely acknowledged that you walked in the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can so do that. Yeah. Because I'm in my own little world. Yep. Right. And it's easy yeah. to do. Yeah. You know, oh, I can't stop from my own little world for a moment and, and even just make eye contact, <laughs> say hello, yeah. say something. No, you know. You know what sometimes i don't and it's it, it i need to work on that yeah. well and <laughs> you know even at work yeah you're right and that yeah. i mean and it's nice hearing that i miss the i miss you yeah it's nice hearing that um i'm glad you're here yeah you know it's just nice it makes you yeah. feel good and it makes you feel good to say that type of stuff mm-hmm. yeah it's, a, it's coming from a position of vulnerability because you are opening yourself up for rejection but your dog does it every day yeah. they open themselves yep. up for rejection you know they're trusting you that you're not going to you know kick them or <laughs> yeah. you know that you're not going to hurt them mm-hmm. when they come at you and they're happy to see you and stuff mm-hmm. it can be very easy for you to pretty much break your dog's spirit but we don't mm-hmm. so let's not do it to other humans either right let's support each other and appreciate each other yeah good point that being said here's a fun one don't soil your bed <laughs> <laughs> That's just a good lesson, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, I can think of a lot, lot of analogies on this one. For sure. Yeah. Dogs, by instinct, keep their bed clean and watch where they sit. Okay, I'm going to interpret this interpret this to mean we all should keep our houses reasonably clean. For me, clutter is draining, order is energizing. So, it's good to help, to, it's good to have some sort of yeah. organization you know, it may not be perfect. It's not going to be, you know, Dewey Decimal organization or anything like that. It doesn't have to be. But keeping your life organized, your being organized, your environment organized, it will help you to keep your thoughts a little bit more organized as well. You know what's funny about that is that actually does not work for me. The more organized an area is, the more pressure I feel to keep it organized. And I would prefer to be messy as heck than to be completely organized because I still know where stuff is. Yeah, no, it's even when things are messy, I know where things are generally. That's true. And it's just that, that too. It's just that's what it is. It really is. I don't want that pressure of, oh, I have to clean this up every day. It's, you know, whatever. I, because I then if I don't... Was that really messy, though? If you can find... You know where everything's at? Well, by conventional standards, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Is like I think yeah. what they're saying is is order for you. Mm-hmm. You know? Your version of order. Yeah. Now, now I, I, I instantly... And I don't know if I'm going to jump ahead into another point mm-hmm. later on. But I, I don't think I will. Because I don't think they'll be thinking about this on this list. Is uh, There's another thing is like with dogs is... They don't poop where they eat. Yes. That's and, a big and, one. And, and this is where I take it to being emotionally organized. Yeah. Meaning, mm-hmm. don't sleep with your coworker. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. sleep with the neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, don't sleep that, with anyone you really feel that there could be conflict or issues. Right? Yeah. The, but just that idea that, and I don't think we ever think about the fact that we bring in disorder in our lives <laughs> or potential disorder when right. we do these things. Yeah. That is not being organized and yeah. keeping things clean, what? so to speak, when we start messing around the fringes. Yeah. Of hey, hey, what's this? Behavior. What's this little box? 
what? Oh, it says Pandora on it. Let me see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and the same thing goes with you know when I, I just there's a lot of star things where it's like hey, where are the red flags? Mm-hmm. You know, like we all know when you walk in the room and you're like. Okay, this, this is one of those nights where I can really party and really make things bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, we know those. We know those places, but it's, sometimes it's like, oh, I can't help myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <Yep. laughs> I, that's kind of where I was thinking too, Heno. Was when this first was brought up. I was thinking more in that kind of a line. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that emotionally, it's you know just to keep keep things tidy for you know easier life <laughs> yeah but you're right i yeah. think this could be interpreted various ways for uh for that uh topic well the next one is use your ears more and your eyes less mm. Humans are over-reliant on our dominant sense, vision. Consequently, we often judge people instantly on how they look instead of taking time to use our ears and listen to what they say. That is very true. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so true. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's absolutely true. It's funny. It's a, it's a musical thing that I'm working on a lot with. Now that, now that I, uh, everything is recorded digitally and I, and I can literally, I can look at a mix. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at waveforms going by. I'm not necessarily listening to what's happening. I'm looking at it, mm-hmm. and I'm making judgments based on appearance. So, what am I practicing? You know, <laughs> wow. yeah. you know, and, and it's the same thing that goes with our you know immediate assumptions based on the way somebody looks or mm-hmm. how they are, and and like there there's the I'm I'm blown away sometimes by what Jax is aware of before I'm even like he's onto something and I'm not even, it's not even close. I have he smelled something. I haven't, haven't even smelled. He's heard something. I haven't even, you know, come close to hearing yeah. because all those senses are working all the time where, what am I doing? I'm sitting in front of a television <laughs> watching it, you know, <laughs> right. yeah. that makes sense though. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. I mean, they hear, you know, Otis hears my husband come home well before I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be in the bedroom with Otis, and he'll start barking the moment he hears the truck in the driveway. Yeah. I don't hear anything. Right. But he hears the truck in the driveway, the footsteps, the, the whole works, you know, and, and I'm glad he does. Yeah. Because well, we, he's my little barker. Yeah, and we might actually hear it, too. If, if we, we give ourselves the chance to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really what it's saying. You know, I'm yeah. never going to. Jack smells smoke. Like, mm-hmm. it hasn't even hit my house yet. And he's already aware of it. Like, I can. He'll he'll be in the backyard. And I've finally learned this behavior of his. He will suddenly start going around sniffing the air. And, and he'll be in the backyard and he'll be barking. And he's doing a warning. Yep. He he, he knows it before. And I've, I finally learned that when he's out there, I just need to wait for a little while. And eventually my dulled human senses will yeah. figure it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, now, that's something I'll never be able to do. Right. Yeah. But I can perceive things differently if I give myself the opportunity well, to. Right there is a great example. Yep. If you listen to him when he barks. And you tr- f- then you see, like you said, when you hear him bark and you go to see what he's barking at and you see the other behaviors, you're using your ears more than you normally would have, you know, so it's versus saying, yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, just walking out, ah, knock it off. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe you're doing that for a reason. <laughs> yeah, because again, that's why I think I said it a week or two ago, or a few weeks ago, you know, that a lot of times when animals like dogs, like when they bark, it isn't to put off a, a sound to other things. It's generally for our, you know, they're helping us basically. It's true. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're giving us a warning that there's an intruder or something isn't right or whatever. And, you know, again, <laughs> again, instead of just, you know, looking and going, ah, oh, you're fine, knock it off. It's like, yeah, uh, maybe take a look around. Really and, yeah, yeah. Listen a little bit. Yeah, it's. Well, that's, hey, that, that's, a, I mean, that really goes to w- w- in our relationships, um, our families, you know, a lot of t- with our children, with our friends, anything like yeah. that. There's typically warning signs if we're willing to, you know, like, oh, you know, shake it off. You're fine. You know, walk it off, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you miss the fact that, you know, maybe, maybe somebody's saying, ouch. Yeah. 
Like they've been telling you out basically, in, yeah. you know, for months, and you're just like, eh, yeah. <laughs> quit bothering me, kid. Yeah, right. yeah. I don't know. You look happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last one is life is short. To so stop and smell the roses. I believe dogs intuitively know that their lives, on average, are shorter than ours, and so they live every day to the fullest. They embrace the lifestyle that boils down to this. Eat, play, love. Yeah, I, I think it, it's I. When I had someone describe to me that dogs have no sense of time, like that is a concept that is foreign to them and made sense to me. That's why yeah. I can be gone for four hours or only twenty minutes, and the reaction I get when I walk in the door is about the same. Yep, because they don't know the difference. Yeah. Now, Jax does have an uncanny ability to know what time it is. Yeah, <laughs> just like Bogart knows. When it's feeding time, yep. like, right. you know, that, that kind of stuff. Like, he stopped playing at daycare right around four. Yep. You know, Leanne's like, I don't know how he knows. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, you know, with all that, but it really is. They're in the moment all some, the time. Some of that with the, the feeding stuff probably is similar to us. If we eat at the same time every day, our mm, bodies yeah. will tell us it's it's time to eat, you know? Like, you'll start to feel hungry or whatever, you know. So I think there's some of that, too. But you're right. It is for, for animals that allegedly have no sense of time, they don't miss a trick when it comes to feeding. <laughs> you, know, you know, like... They when, know exactly when they're... Yeah. When time. Like, around the same time, 4 or 5 o'clock. If, our, if my cat's not out in the kitchen, I'm like, is she sick? You know, like... Yeah. <laughs> right? It's true. Because it is. is She's almost out there every day and, you know, like, come on, feed me. Like, I'm out here. (laughs) So. It's all about that, the eat, play, and love. Well, it is. Really, a lot of this goes back to what Heno said originally is that so much of this really is about trying to live in the moment. Yes. You know, to be in the moment, and which is, you know, for like me, very difficult. It is for a lot of people. I just, you know. Mm-hmm. with anxiety and, and stuff, it's it's hard to live in the moment. But that's what I'm striving for. That's my goal is to get as close mm-hmm. to that as I can, you know. And, and this makes a ton of sense because if I could live with just those things, life would be way less stressful yeah. than it is. It really would be. You know, because I wouldn't be yeah. thinking about the past or the f- future or, you know, what's this and this and who's thinking about this. Like you said, the dog doesn't come up to you going, oh, well, I hope they don't hit me, generally. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe if they were abused, I'm not, you know, what I'm saying, though, is it's, it's still In the general. idea. They generally will come up to you for, you know, to get, you know, our affection or our attention and put themselves out there constantly for rejection, you know. Oh, and, yeah. And that's that's a... Very openly and honestly. They're just, I'm here. I want to love you. Yeah. Or, you know, in a cat's sense, you know, I'm tolerating you until I get what I want. So (laughs) it's interesting when you when when you at least when I tend to hear people uh, talk about regrets Mm -hmm. about something in their lives, it's usually one of those three things. Mm-hmm. You know, those real simple things. And it, it's about, you know, not, you know, wishing I spent more time with family, mm-hmm. you know, wish there was more, you know, more love and affection or, you know, that kind of stuff. It's people don't re- generally regret not spending. I mean, sometimes people regret spending the money if they were very frugal. But for the most part, most people aren't regretting, you know, being not being a tycoon of industry. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And you, regular, you know, I really regret I wasn't a complete. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I really, I really regret the fact that I smiled so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're never Nobody gonna, says that. Yeah, no, not unless yeah. they're really obsessed with their lines. It. Yeah. I was say huh? not unless they have issues with their wrinkles. That's the only yeah, exactly. time somebody would really say I smiled too much. <laughs> I regret right. that I wasn't enough of a hugger in life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I regret the fact that I said I love you way too many times. Yeah. yeah. Just overkill. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You yeah. know, it's it, true. It, it doesn't happen, folks. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. And that's why There's... I actually, I've seen people post stuff um, on social media about how, you know, regretting that they put themselves out there so much. And it's like, no, that's living. 
That is what yeah. you should strive for. Always put yourself yeah. out there. Rejection is part of life. We learn that from the time we're a little kid. Most of us don't get our mm-hmm. way all the time when we're a little kid. But you still put yourself out there. You know, you this time you ask your parents for a toy at the store. They say no. Next time you go, what do you do? You ask again. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> because yeah. you're living in the moment because you want that toy. You know, it's, again, it's a lot of this stuff with the dogs, oddly enough, also is really similar to if you look at children. You know, they mm-hmm. live very much for what's in front of them. They don't generally worry for what's down the road unless, you know, they, they've they got, you know, mental illness of some sort as a child. You know, it, it's it's all in the same thing. You know, it, we, we just look at, we're looking for a way to live now. And, you know, I, I hate when I read people talking about putting themselves out there less. Like, I get it. We've all been hurt. That Heno and I just did a whole episode on it. Um, you know, and, and we get it. You know, we're, we, but we've all been hurt. Everybody understands that, you know, you just, you know, you fall off a bike, get back on the bike, you know, and, and I think yep. that's the whole thing. Like I said, anytime I see that or I see someone saying that, you know, they don't want to feel the feels or whatever. And it's like, yeah, trust me, that's a horrible way to live. You know, apathy is awful. You know, that's not something anyone should ever strive for. So, you know, put yourself out there and yeah, you're going to fall on your face sometimes. Yeah, that's that's just the way life works. Life lifes you, and you fall on your face sometimes. <laughs> but you never you know. know who... You end up with a really good story. Well, yeah, but you also may not may not know who will be there to help you up. You know, right? It's some, True. Sometimes you find new people or whatever when that happens. So some of my best stories come from when life lifes me. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's, it's what it is. You look at you know Einstein talked about mm-hmm. that. You know about how you know failing is a necessary part of the process it's not Mm -hmm. you know it's it shouldn't be an end point it should be a beginning point essentially so yeah the old the old what did you know it it took you you know three thousand attempts to make a light bulb no i came up with two thousand nine hundred ninety nine ways not to make one (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah that's on how you want to look at it you know it's like boy you you know it took a lot you failed a lot it's like no i i learned a lot yeah (laughs) i learned well (laughs) and really each time you learned you succeeded a little more you know exactly because you really do you're not going to actually fail that many to where every aspect of it is a failure each time you're going to go okay well that doesn't work so then you make a change it's you know those weren't yeah those weren't failures those those were successes right i learned how not to do something now the key is also to be able to look at things and go okay i did this and i shouldn't have done this sometime you know again taking you know your responsibility in situations also you know yeah i think that's something i'll so my animals are pretty good at is if they if life does life them in a way mm-hmm. they tend to not do it again you, you know whereas i will go back and do the same <laughs> stupid thing at one oh really three times wasn't enough here yeah. let's try that again right. Ooh, that cupcake that looks delicious so well <laughs> wonderful i'll try it again yep. i know uh, yeah sure it took me years to recover from that but ah, uh, you know, I, I won't make dog, i won't make the same mistake again <laughs> then you do yeah. it again <laughs> Yeah, and the and the dog's like, eh, I ain't getting in that dog bed. I know what happened last time right. you hit the gas. I went flying out the back of the car. Yep. Mm, nope, no thanks. <laughs> nope, yep. nope, nope. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, guys, well, what do you think? We good? I like that list. It was great. Yeah. Awesome. I did, too. And made me think and uh, made me reflect back on some of my fun moments from this last weekend with the puppy and uh, seeing him learn and experience a bunch of new things like going swimming in a very ice cold lake (laughs) and (laughs) not liking that whatsoever. Right. (laughs) Learning what sand is and where not to get sand. (laughs) (laughs) There's no such thing. If you get into sand, Sand does what it wants. <laughs> right. That's but, awesome. Like, I didn't even sit yeah. down. How do I have sand in my underpants? <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, the joy of just running around with a stick in your mouth. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't do it, yeah. but if I could experience his type of joy. I would if I could have that level of joy. <laughs> yes. That level of joy. Yeah. That just, it's just pure bliss. 
I've got a stick and the sticks are awesome. Yeah. That, yeah. What, what are you going to say to that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, well, with that folks, I guess let's wrap it up. Um, if you want to continue the conversation with us, you can reach out, reach me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. You can also shoot us an email at the Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook.com. You can also uh, go to our website at the Crazy Life Podcast Weebly.com. And you hello, how can they reach you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Find me on Facebook, Heno Heiter. And I'm going to throw a shout out to the Shrink to Shrink podcast. That's the word shrink, the number two, and the word shrink again. Uh, good friends of ours, they have reviewed 13 ah, Reasons Why yes. recently. Yeah. And they're going to do a two part on this. And Courtney said that we were part of the inspiration for them picking up this one oh, because we, we did have a lot of questions about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is these are two people that actually make a living doing what we, we do for free. They, they are <laughs> trained professionals, unlike us. They are actual professionals, yes, yeah. Are actual. And yes. their podcast deals with taking a movie or a, or a show and mm-hmm. discussing it from from their you know bringing their experience to it and what's going on. And so, if anybody has also, I, I think it might be kind of fun for all of us to actually listen into these podcasts and then review their podcast yeah <laughs> i actually uh when i saw part one of that went up i was like all right because uh courtney yeah. had told me that they were going to be doing it soon and uh yeah i'm glad you remembered that i forgot to write that down as something to bring up uh because let's I'd... bring it up before our next episode too at the start okay yeah Absolutely. um if you're looking them up like on uh twitter and whatnot it's shrink then the number two and then shrink um yeah. i believe um, that's correct yeah so if you're searching for it make sure you use the number two in the middle there um yeah, otherwise it's very hard to find yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are on twitter at shrink to shrink uh, again with the number two um so yeah definitely uh give that a listen especially because you know i know a lot of people had a lot of reactions to that show so i'm, I'm very curious to hear how they looked at it because i've read quite a yeah. few reactions from people who are professionals and just you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm very and, excited. And in the show notes, there's, they've got resource, you know, the parent resource forum, five stages of grief, you know, various links. Awesome. And they're all things that we have been talking about or, and, and, and for us, a lot of it is just, you know, we're, we're kind of wondering about things yeah. and, you know, yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what their, you know, professional opinions are. Yeah, me too. So yeah, definitely. And they've been supporters of ours for a while anyway. So, uh, yeah. You know, they're please check them out. Good folks, so check out that podcast. Don't just uh, check that one out. Like uh, one of them, the first one I listened to was on the movie Inside Out, which has been used. That was at, so good, yeah. And that one was a great episode. And they, you know, a lot of people have used that movie as a teaching tool for mental illness and such. Uh, so that you know, uh, if you're a fan of that movie, go check that out too, or just look at what else they have because. They may have insight on movies that you hadn't stuff you hadn't really thought about about the movie, you know. So, or a TV show. I don't. I haven't looked at all their episodes, so I can't remember if they've done other TV shows or not. But whatever. So. Absolutely. Yep. And, and did you give your links out? I did, I did. I'm all good. Yep. Okay. And you can find the show on Facebook uh, at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, you can also find the show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod. You can find me at Stunami. My other podcast uh, can be found at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage dot com. And that show is not safe for work. Um, uh, shoot, I lost my place again. Oh, uh, we're part of the, <laughs> part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at TangentBoundNetwork dot com. So go have a, a look over there at different shows and whatnot. There may be something. That tickles your fancy over there. Um, if you'd like to help the show out, uh, if you're using iTunes, please review us, rate us, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and if you're using other podcast apps, uh, if they have a like or a share type of uh, a button, please use that gimmick. And uh, that'll help us get found easier uh, when people search. Um, yeah, I think that's all that stuff. All right. Uh, <laughs> just all over the place tonight 
So then I'll remind you that uh, we're not therapists, trained professionals, uh, doctors, anything like that. So if you do find yourself in a position where you think you need help, please don't self-diagnose. Please don't uh, use this show as a replacement for therapy. And, uh, you know, please reach out to someone, um, you know, and ask them for help. There's all sorts of good resources out there, like Heno was talking about with the Shrink to Shrink show. Or if you go over to our Facebook page, there's some links in there for crisis hotlines or uh, NAMI.org, which can help you find therapy and help in your area. Uh, Just different stuff like that. So please reach out to somebody if you need help. Um, don't 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 do what I did and wait twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like Brian. No. Um, and uh, then, of course, if you're feeling suicidal or homicidal, anything along that line, uh, please tell someone. Uh, reach out again to you know if you're in therapy, tell your therapist or tell friends. Uh, go to a hospital if you, you need to, or call one of the crisis hotline numbers. Even planning it, or even just really thinking about it, especially if you don't normally, you know, anything like that can be a red flag. So please tell somebody because, you know, if you can nip it in the bud, it, you know, hopefully it won't manifest into an action. And um, then, of course, as I usually say at the end of the show, if you you know, re- reach out to somebody this week. We talked about, you know, appreciating people. So, you know, like when, when you're around somebody and you appreciate them, you know, jump up on them and lick their faces and, <laughs> no, uh, but, um, <laughs> no, I'm just, appreciate that, yeah, but you know, that. Eh, it's fine. No, um, but you know, uh, <laughs> tell them that you appreciate them, that you love them. Uh, just check in with people, see how they're doing. Um, yeah. you know, I've, I've had a few people this week just in my online stuff that have, learn just how quickly life can change. And, uh, you know, you, you just, you never, you know, you never want to be left with the what if situation. So, you know, mm-hmm. tell people you love them now. Don't wait. Absolutely. It's so important. Um, you know, I don't have much else I want to say. So with that, folks, keep smiling when you feel like smiling. And, uh, Have a good week.